the stage is at at the moment are after having taken down so much they're now replacing things restoring things putting a new floor down looking to high level work windows have been taken out they will be replaced very shortly it's at the stage of um, i think over the top shall we say of the of the hill the date hopefully for completion is now mid september it was the end of september but with the thought of the holy father coming and the possibility of his looking in en route um we would like to get it finished by mid september peter's enthusiasm is is refired i think um and i gather from friends who have actually seen the work that it is possibly going to be one of his finest works i haven't seen it yet and i don't want to press him until he's ready to show it to me looking a bit at the moment it's looking a wee bit kind of raw and cartoon like I suppose in a way a bit caricatured almost you know so I have to get away from that I'm just wondering whether it's possible to for me to to actually go beyond that you know I'm just trying to make this painting as if he's just about to meet his death you know and he's you know he's been through all this torture everyone's really been very kind to me they've all been very understanding and i hope they're not going to be horrified when they see it, this painting i hope it will move people to to be healed by the power of john ogilvy When I was young, I was obsessed with death. When I thought the world was going to end, uh, when I was about thirteen, twelve, thirteen years old, and I decided I was going to do twelve last paintings before the end of the world, you know, and I was excited about it. It wasn't something that I was frightened of. The problem is, I was frightening everyone else. I mean, the idea of painting, if you think the world's going to not be here, it cannot be then said that I paint for. posterity or for money or for you know for any kind of worldly fame I'm not really interested in that the reason why I paint is because my paintings change people's lives and if I can do one painting that can change someone's life then that's my function when you think of the totality of of Peter's work it's awesome i mean this particular commission i mean how many contemporary artists could do that <laughs> are capable of doing that yeah not very many After 9 months work and despite the Ogilvy canvas being complete in most people's eyes Peter keeps on changing the painting What stage is the painting at for you so fight stage <laughs> well, I've been running and raving all day I've kind of forgotten how to paint I think mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to go through these uh, stages of of um, absolute hell to get there, you know. It's changed quite a lot since you last saw it. It was looking all looking too cartoony, I suppose, you know. And I wasn't I wasn't really pushing myself to the absolute limit. Um, There's a big painting and it feels like even bigger now, you know, it feels like a monster now. If you see it in the mirror, 
you can see whether a painting's balanced or not. You can see all the mistakes in it, and it's a horrific sight sometimes. It's just quite ironic that it's been gifted to the church, and it's causing me this amount of uh, anguish, I suppose, you know, just to do, do the painting. Right. Thank you. Time to go. But Peter wasn't quite finished for the day. So what kind of got you going there? Um, just, uh, just I need to really destroy to, to rebuild, you know. I think the main thing was to get rid of the prettiness of the colours and the, you know, the prettiness of the subject, because it is a, a grim subject matter, you know. Um, focus on John Ogilvy which is, I think, what it's done now, you know. I like it better, anyway. Aye, it's definitely all right. Hey, Black Mike, see you tomorrow, thank you. That last 20 minutes there, it was quite... It was like watching Mike Tyson in a heavyweight fight. It was exciting, because you didn't know what he was going to do. You didn't know if he was going to just smash right through the canvas. There was that much energy going in there, you know. And uh, to have that confidence to be able to do that, I mean, especially on such a thing as large as that, and the amount of work and time that he's put into it. I was only kidding him on, and I said to him this morning, there must be 20 grand's worth of paint on it. But I'll tell you what, there's got to be 10 grand's worth of paint on it. Despite all the delays in starting and months of work, Peter continues to paint out the figure on the canvas. I went in the next morning and I did even more, but I buggered it up again. So then I started getting more and more frustrated and I just completely covered it over, almost destroyed it. And so actually I've done another one basically and then started this other one as the other one was starting to go downhill. So I spent a week from start to finish on a John Ogilvy and it's better than the one I worked for months on. The main thing is John Ogilvy is there and it's much, much better and more moving than the other one was. <sighs> Try not to smile here. <laughs> Can you please, man? Aye. After nearly two years, the Ogilvy is finally complete. A canvas a fifth the size of the original plan, but complete nonetheless. With the unveiling plan to coincide with the papal visit, there is a final setback. Three months before the Pope comes to Glasgow, the main contractor for the cathedral renovation goes into administration with a loss of 170 jobs. This will delay the completion date by at least six months. Given this delay, and with other work stacking up for Peter, the decision is made to unveil the painting at the Archdiocese offices in Glasgow. Are you nervous about the unveiling? I'm nervous, yeah. I mean, when I first came in here, it, to tell the truth, it didn't look as good as I thought it was going to look. But I'm gradually warming to it again. Um, it's kind of quite emotional, I suppose, as well, because it's the end of a chapter, beginning of a new chapter. I think it's about time I go on to a new chapter because this chapter's starting to get really boring now. It's a great afternoon for us. At last, here in the Air Hall, we are able to unveil Peter Housen's gift of the painting of the martyrdom of St. John Ogilvy. Uh, well, thank you very much, Your Grace. I, I hope you like it, actually. 
<laughs> if there's a dead silence, and I know that you don't. Um, no, it's it's uh, a long. Uh, it has been a long journey. Um, two years, in fact. Um, and um, I'll tell you a wee bit about it. Um, it was going to be a lot bigger. Um, and it was going to be one of the largest crowd scenes in art history. Um, sounds a bit pompous saying that, but I worked on a painting for about nine months almost. And then in one moment of absolute madness, I completely destroyed it um, after nine months' work. But luckily, a bit like Blue Peter, I had one already prepared earlier. <laughs> um, I don't know what more I can say apart from unveiling it, really. But thank you all for coming. Um, this is the dodgy bit in case it falls over. This is very much more an invitation to engage spiritually with someone who, for his faith, uh, was prepared to go to the gallows. He's always searching for something new, and I, I think that's um, something that keeps me, as, as a fan and a dealer in his work, interested. I'm never quite sure what to expect. Uh, he's an asset in this time of such puerile, pathetic uh, expressions of what we call art it is, it is almost disgusting. And I say thank God for Peter House. It's a very difficult thing to do, obviously, paint a religious image for the 21st century. How difficult is that? Most artists couldn't even contemplate you're doing something like this, but he's done it. So I think we have to take our, our hat off to Peter Harrison once again. Been through a hellish time. It's a dark period. Sounds a bit melodramatic, talking about me, me, me and my health, but... Um, but I've been, uh, the first time in my life, about two months ago, um, I felt suicidal. I've fought my way through this. I'm still not completely out of the woods, as they say, but I'm recovering now. Um, I understood what it was like to be in the mind of a madman. It's not a very nice place to be. I'd like to get a bit of joy back in my life now somehow and stop being a miserable bastard. It's difficult though. There's a trip to Delphi, belly button of the world, here on BBC4 this evening at 5 to 11. That's here after a slight change to the schedule with a tribute to Henrik Goretzky next.